Welcome to jQuery Mobile School. This is the seventh video in this series. In the first six videos, we learned how to create a front-end jQuery mobile app that was powered by a JSON file which had the dynamic data. In this video, we're going to look at how we can create that dynamic JSON file so that our front-end gets new data as and when the back-end gets new data. So, this is the front end that we created. It reads the data, the JSON data from the back end. So, the way we created our back end is we created using Play Framework. We implemented two endpoints, right? This back end does two things it serves the JSON file, which has a lot of information that's required by our jQuery mobile app, like the picture URL the trailer link to YouTube, the name of the movie, etc. right? So whatever your dynamic data is specified in your JSON, the app is responsible for reading that JSON file and then giving it to your front-end jQuery mobile app. It's also responsible for creating this JSON file with new data. Let's say there's a new movie listed. You want you know, your app to have new data. So what we're going to learn in the next five minutes is how we can create this app, this backend app, that gives your front-end jQuery mobile app new dynamic data. So the brief overview looks like this. For new data, our backend is going to look at and scrape IMDB website for all the information like, you know, what's the picture URL, what's the trailer link, what's the name of the new movies that are listed. It's going to get all of that data and then save it into our JSON file. And it's also going to serve our front end. So let's get into code. The first thing you do in your Play Backend app is you define an endpoint. In this case, I'm defining a slash movies endpoint, which basically reads the file and then serves it to the user. Right? So it's this, this path. It's going to read this JSON file and then serve it to your app. You can go and check it out now. It's it's live, so hindimovies.herokuapp.com slash movies. So that's the endpoint that you have to first define. You say, this is the endpoint where you get the JSON file from. The second thing you need to do is implement the endpoint that you just created. So we create a new controller. In this case, I've named it as a movie controller, which extends the controller, reads the movie's JSON file from the file system, and serves it. Right. So we have the movies controller, read movies file method. That's what we have implemented here. That takes care of reading file. Now we also want to create file, which is downloading the file content from IMDb. So let's look at that. Step three. In the third step, what we're going to do is we're going to scrape IMDb website using regular expressions. We're going to scrape for all the movie titles. We're going to scrape for the YouTube URL links and generate them. You're going to scrape for the name of the movie. And we're going to write it as a JSON file. So in this case, I'm manually writing a JSON file. That could be a better way of write, using a library to do this. But this is this helps me for now. So this creates the JSON file. So the third step, we also implemented the writing method. So we, we talked about the read of the file and we also talked about the write method which is every time a new movies get added we're gonna write it to our JSON file. The final step is to make sure that every time new movies get added that we our backend continuously generates the new JSON file. Like the first time you create this JSON file it would have movies at that point of time. But as and when new movies get added every day you would want to generate new movies JSON file. So what we do is we create um, a scheduler which basically is called every time in a specific schedule to create new movies file. In this case we have create movies file method in movies controller. So we're going to use ACA and we're going to use its scheduler. The way we do this is we define an actor we define an ACA actor, which every time it receives a message, 
it does an action. In this case, the action is to create the movies file. And the message here is tick. What we have said here is I'm going to use the system scheduler to create the first movies JSON file five seconds after the application has started. And I want to do this on a regular interval of 24 hours. And we specify that by millisecond. So what this means is that in my global settings, when my application starts, after the application has started, and five seconds have gone by, I'm going to create a new movies JSON file. And 24 hours after that, I'm going to create another movies JSON file. So this is like a job that creates the news movie JSON files for you. So as and when new movies get added to IMDb, you get that into your system. You can see all of this in action. You can download all of this code and run it locally. It's available at uh, Bollywood Movies, at GitHub. There's also pretty good instructions on how you can set this up locally. You can check it out and it's live on a website. So you can see how this endpoint serves. That wraps up this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I deployed this app that you've been using. So I've deployed all of this app on this herokuapp.com website, and it's all free. So in this next video, I'm going to show you how I created this, how I can deploy, how you also can deploy your app on heroku.com and you can share it with anyone on the internet. Thanks. Happy learning.